Okay, you should be able to hear me. Let me know if you have any issues. And we're just going to jump right into it. I, I uh, think we're going to be looking at this one that I had worked on last week. I felt like taking it a little further. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab all of this. And uh, I'm going to duplicate that and combine it. There's a couple ways we can do this. So first I'm going to go Control A, Control Shift C, and Control V. So that will um, copy the whole canvas and paste it as a flat layer. That way I get exactly what I see. And now this other version, I've duplicated my work group and I'm going to merge that group. And that can work a little differently because if there's any gaps in that group and the way the blend uh, blend modes work between those layers, it might give us a different result. And see, actually, you can by thumb between those, you can kind of see the difference there. Okay. And finally, our fill color. If we change this, if there's any um, gaps or any any area where it shows through on that layer then changing our fill color will adjust that result so that might be something we want to play with here just to have some things uh, push through have a different um, variation that would be if we went lighter with it if we go darker more saturation. Let's let's do that. So we'll jump between those two. Okay, I like that. Um, I will need to zoom out to see which of these two versions I prefer. This basically it looks like there's just more. A light color in here and some of the dark color gets pushed uh, pushed back I think we're just gonna let's go half season we'll kind of see what we like somewhere in there that gives me a little bit of variation all right, so I'm going to take all that and merge that down again. Um, this will be our work group. So this was our original. And uh, we've already uh, messed things up a little bit, but whatever. Um, I think we can hide these. So now this is our, uh, our setup that we're working from. So I will actually move these into the work group as well. And then hide that. And this will be our flattened layer. And we'll do a new to start painting on top of that. Okay, so I think it's good for us to look at this with fresh eyes. I'm gonna um, uh, flip the canvas real quick to see if there's anything that pops out to us that we could change. You know, I'm looking over here and I'm kind of seeing this flow here. I want this to see what I'm seeing here, analyzing is just this line, right? I want to break that up. So um, I may even just use the smudge tool and just see if we can you know, quickly kind of just pull some things over. That's kind of fun. But remember, our goal here is to break up that, uh, you know, that vertical thing we had going on there. I want these dynamic shapes in here. Try to 
I tuck some of these shapes in behind each other, right? So that there's a sense of depth, right? So that's to bring this blue over here, right? Like that, and then pull some of this down and kind of like put it behind this shape. We'll, we'll lighten that up in just a minute here. And then have some kind of showing through here. And I think we need to, again, kind of cut the, Cut that angle back so that it keeps feeling as if it's um, got that diagonal dynamicism to it. All right, I'm going to pull this over. Okay, and then these still line up, so I'm thinking, should I? Push these back here. Maybe bring this out a little bit that way. Maybe bring this down a little more. Um, I'm also conscious of the, um, the weight of these. So I don't want this to be equal to that. And especially if I'm pushing this back in space, I might kind of push these darks just a little bit lighter. Maybe break up the shape a little more and try to get it um, to diminish as it goes farther back. So that our our overall shapes and our texture and are all kind of um, diminishing into these smaller and tighter uh, patterns. Now one issue with, uh, with this kind of smudge method is that we're going to lose, especially if we slow down with this brush, we're going to slow, we're going to um, blend a lot of colors together. So we're going to lose the delineation between um, these like little pops of uh, warm um, tones and cool tones. Like we've kind of took some time to work in those uh, value shifts and uh, we don't want to lose those out of laziness so that is something that we'll be kind of paying attention to as we're doing this uh, that those things don't get blended together too much and if you'll recall this brush you know the faster you move it the the more uh, clean the cleaner and more kind of cut up those uh, uh, stamps will be and so if we slow it down that's when it'll start blending and blurring um, so again be conscious of when you want to blend um, an edge together and when you want to keep it sharp um, I'm just gonna move this whole thing back I think down Bring this over again to, uh, to reestablish that dynamicism. Di, ne, mi, sism. Blend those shapes together so that this uh, darker value kind of blends into that lighter value so they appear to be related without just being flat. What? What is this guy talking about? Uh oh gotten into the whisper self-doubt voice already and we're only 
Ten minutes in. Okay, we kind of dealt with this, though. Uh, I feel like this is not quite. It does not bring me joy. Let's just say that. It grieves me. So I'm going to try to separate these shapes, make this one darker here. And uh, kind of a sharp edge. Cast a shadow, and I don't really want these to touch, okay, so I'm going to push that right off the canvas so it does not appear to be, um, you know, I want this to be casting a shadow down here, right, without um, having to, you know, be one shape like that, right, I want it to appear to go off the scene. Uh, even these might be too flat, you know, I might think about curving these in. So there's more of that kind of dynamic motion going on. And um, there's going to be quite a bit of value uh, adjustment that we'll be doing. Um, just know it. I just know it. I think in this kind of environment that we've, you know, we've kind of set up this like, it's almost like it's a cave, you know, so uh, I would imagine that you'd have this softer light in that situation, unless you have a hard, like a hard light that is casting a shadow. Um, but in this case, you know, if you're, if you're in a cave, it's, it's very unlikely that you're going to have a light source that is large enough or far away enough to cast a tight shadow, and so your uh, cast will be um, it'll be softened. The edge will be soft, and I think that's kind of one of those hallmarks of that uh, you know cave lighting. Someone out there is vehemently disagreeing with me, but state your case. All right. Um. Some of these, you know, we get this, this black, that black value. And though I, I do kind of like um, that, we get that juxtaposition, those dark values in there. Um, you know, kind of that play back and forth of these dark and light. Uh, I, um... 
I don't want it to reference too much, you know, so like this area kind of references over here and there, and it all kind of gets flattened on a one plane, okay? So that's something where we'll have to really address those values and get them um, into their own zones. Stay in your lane value. This is like lesson of the decade for me. Like I, I know this. I know these things, but alas, I am a sucker for high contrast. And when things aren't working, I just want to pump it up. That kind of delicate balance is. Uh, it takes more more discipline than I feel like bringing most days. Delicate, sensitive, all that stuff. Mm. Okay. And um, you know, as I'm thinking about it down here, I do want this play of soft and hard edges, you know, some of these need to be just absolutely crispy, stone-like, you know, and then I want some of it to just kind of, just kind of melt away like it's Like a whipped topping being mixed with some kind of something delicious. Blueberry, blueberry, uh, fruit topping. Is it a fruit topping if it's a berry? Is it a berry topping? Somebody with an education help me out here. Let's not get carried away with adding all these holes. But let's get carried away with adding some holes, okay? All right. Oh, that was the flattened layer I was working on. There we go. So now I've now I've got this other layer. And um Let's start adjusting some of these values, right? So I'm thinking this, we can work on a kind of a lighter blue. And this is a decent time to squint and kind of have a look at what's going on here. And uh, let me get these things homogenized, as we say. We've got these little bits of um, kind of cyan, highly saturated, and it shifts over, and that's fine. Uh, but there, it can be a little jarring if it pushes too far away from the um, harmony of the, the colors that we have. And at this uh, stage too, it's like, um, we also have the opportunity to. Uh, to sharpen some edges up, right? So I like how this area right in here, it kind of just has this smokiness to it, right? And it just kind of all blends together. I do think we could add more visual interest into this. Um, and of course, some shadows and some shifts and light. So if a shadow is being cast onto this, you've got this value here and then we could just kind of blend uh, 
into this brighter value. And we could bring this up, and bring this maybe up in here, you know, so it looks like it has a form to it. Use this blue in the background, I think, to just you know, push all that further back. I'm going to take this and see just how far we can push this. If we can get that to be really dark on the tips of that. Maybe over here. that edge out. That's getting uh, awfully fussy. You know, I don't know that I need to get that into it. <clears throat> I like this. I like how it lightens up here. Kind of like, it's almost like when steam rolls off of a, a surface, you know, or a, a form or fog, you know, with like the, uh, the early morning when the sun hits it. Um, I know I'm like I'm like talking about things that are not happening here, but um, that's the kind of uh, sense and the emotion that I want to kind of uh, elude allude to. Maybe we get some more of this blue. Let's see if we introduce this down here. If that'll push that back, oh, you gonna help us out or not? Or do we need to undo all this? Chalk it up in the history books is a terrible decision. I think if we blend that a little bit, get a, um, a little more blue into that tone, into our uh, little fog thing going down. I don't know. I don't even know why I'm thinking like there'd be like a cloud. And actually, you know, this might be a, something interesting to play with is bringing this out into space. So if this is like out back here, right? And well, let's use a color that uh, maybe would be uh, more obvious, right? So if we've got this, this brighter color here and it's Bluer back there, and then we have it kind of come back around here and around. And we could uh, we could also have this cast a shadow on the form below it, and then maybe conform to this surface down here. Work its way around. You know really distorting the perspective here, but let's keep playing with it. See what happens. down here a little bit. All right, I said something about a shadow, right? So let's see if we put something 
Hold on. Put something down here. I don't know. I really changed the form here quite a bit, so kind of have it more like a layer of water rather than a. Um, Other than a wispy cloud or something. Uh, I don't know how much I like that. So let's, um, I'm going to pin that layer and then we're going to bring in some of that blue down in there. It's like the shadow. Uh, let's get with a more muted version of that. Painting on top of that, um, that shadow as well. Yeah, I don't like that much. I'm just going to be direct with that. So let's, um, I'm going to unlock uh, that and then bring this down a little bit. Have a look at what we did here. I think I just um, kind of went too flat with it. I don't really like what that's doing. So selectively erase some of this. Okay, but let's see if we can integrate any of it. So. I like the idea that this just kind of keeps going down here. Down, down, down. bring in see that's too I think that's too bright so I want to use this existing blue here and just spread it out a little bit all right we got Adonis in the chat welcome 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 how are you doing tonight Are you doing, um, are you doing, uh, plain air April? Plain air April. It's like a plain air drawing every day in April. With, um, warrior painters is that group. I need to 
flatten some of this a little bit. So like all of this here. In fact, I'm just going to copy paste it instead of uh, messing around with the uh, smudge tool. I think this could stand to be lower. Just a little bit flatter. Um, as it as it recedes in, in space, I don't want to. Uh, you know, I don't want to lose the dynamicism of having it. You know, it be a diagonal line, but I also don't want to lose the illusion of space, where as you head towards the horizon, things would start to flatten out. I think we can bring, I think we can introduce a little bit more value. So one of the ideas for this uh, that I was playing with is keeping the value in a lower, in that low key range so that um, I can saturate uh, the mids and then all the shadows would go, um, you know, kind of compressed towards black um, but I think in order to really get this to work the values need to be balanced really well um, and that will just you know take more time you know to kind of push things back there in the background so that they're not um, you know too dark and pushing forward and then um, just having these smooth transitions in the right the right areas. But I don't want to lose some of these nice edges. You know. Could approach it with a um you know like a selective curves layer or something like that. But uh I feel like painting, so that's what I'm going to do. This guy, willfully choosing the wrong way. That could be brightened up. I want to, again, that little transition of um, counter change from this light to dark, but um, still, I think it's too heavy. Too heavy handed. So now we'll be taking some of these areas and 
Trying to just bring some more interest, you know. Kind of draw the eye in, give you some things to to look at. Get close to some of these little details, and we don't want to get crazy with detail. We don't don't want to get crazy with contrast, but um, I think you got to have something that invites the viewer into the into the painting. I was just talking with a friend today about this, like having the visual in invitation to come closer and you know see what's going on. What's going on here? You know, what's going on right here? That is similar to that, you know, like it, those kind of things. You got all these little sharp shapes and contrast it pulls you in. And um, why not? You know, I think the I think your choice of you know, shape and line will do the same thing. Uh, how areas converge, uh, particularly like here, we got these kind of sharp, a sharp point here. Again, with the reference, um, you know, one shape referencing another, this referencing that, you know, this little smoke shape here is referencing this, you know, so it kind of transitions all the way up. And we could even go perhaps another step further and you know, do it again here. And kind of keep on drawing the eye. And I wonder, you know, if we just switch it, we go same shape. And now we just go dark with it. And then see if we can keep that pattern going where you're, you start here and you just keep, you go around, right? Who gave this man a license to monologue? Sorry, everyone. Just get going. Got me monologuing. Zoom out here, let's see, how are we doing on value? I think we can push some of these up and combine some of these. I'm gonna grab this right here. I'm just gonna kind of tighten all this up to be um, the same value and hue there, just to be one shape that then transitions into these other um, and these other values. But there was some nice uh, hue variation there, but I think that's more powerful. Like when you're doing rocks or um, trees or, you know, organic shapes, um, it's really nice to have some Variation when you're doing clouds, yes, you want variation, but it actually kind of communicates uh, something. It kind of communicates um, the direction of the plane and how light is hitting it, and so it can um, it can confuse the eye more than it. You know, I, I think the the interplay of value is. Uh, it's interesting. It's kind of, it's, um, you know, it's like when you have two flavors coming together, the, um, the taste can be exciting, I'll say. But um, it also can be confusing if it's the wrong context. Like salted caramel could be wonderful, but... Uh, an ice cream that's too soft, salty is uh, it's just not what you expected, right? It's confusing. Don't confuse the children with salty ice cream. Okay, 
Maybe that's a bad example because I'm sure there's some delicious salted ice cream. More food references. That's what we need here. Okay, I think this line right here cuts this in half. And I kind of want to bring these back together so that there's something that crosses that line and tells you, hey, it doesn't stop there. It's still going. All right. So that's what we're going to do with this here. And there's enough um, going on that's kind of, a, kind of associated with this uh, line. Like I've got this other, it's almost like a line that shadows it, you know. Um, and I left it there, you know, at first I didn't really like it. I left it there thinking that it kind of echoed that motion. But I think we'll get a tighter, cleaner, um read if we knock that out and then have these be associated so you get this dark line here and then as we come up into shadow here we have a, a lighter line there let me see if i can line that up so that was associated with this okay kind of a lost and found thing and to a degree I feel like it kind of it makes me want to add another one like here you know receding into maybe coming out of this area right here and um, maybe up here Call it cheating, but uh, trying to give some sense of scale and space. Do we prefer that being a light value there or dark value? Or a little bit of both. It brings a lot of contrast to push the, to, you know, to have a light edge and a dark edge together. Maybe that. Pushes it back a little bit to give it that. Uh, Dull it down a little. Okay, now let's uh, let's push some values up. So I'm thinking we we could select. This is not something I do often, but I should. Um, you do what is it? Focus area or color range? One of these. You. Um, I don't think that's what I want. Uh, flatten is that what we want here? Select color range. There we go. I think that's better. Pick that fuzziness, not too fuzzy. Uh, let's do the whole let's say image. Is this going to do all layers? Eh, well, we'll go with that. And let's select, let's increase this a bit more. Huh. 
that decreased it. Please hold. This is not a function I use. And I see people use it, and I go, that looks super handy. So we select that value, right? Do we need to go in between that? Oh, we get the plus, so we can add more colors. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm looking at right there. And then we're going to select this value. We're going to go with a lighter value. I'm just going to mask that so it doesn't look so awful. Um, and let's start kind of pushing this in here and see... Nope, that's not what I want there. I don't want to send this, you know, quite to white. In fact, I might push this over to a more saturated color so that it doesn't completely take over. But it blends in with that background a little more. And I'm going to zoom out for this portion so that I can get a better sense of what's going on. I think that flattens that area too much, but we'll look at it. Actually, ah, that wasn't all that complicated to begin with, so that's something to consider there.
I don't think that's what I want back there, but I just wanted to test that out. Let's see what would happen. Don't want to attract too much attention to that corner, so I'm gonna dial it back. Dial it back, folks. What else do we need? So this is not exactly flattening this out, but I'm trying to get a little bit of form into these uh, cloud shapes down here. All right, let me zoom in. Yeah. This shape could be done up a little better. Um, I'm not sure about this. You know, I, I like that transition. Uh, or rather, this is darker, but I think the transition could be smoother. Okay, let's pause there and we'll do another um, do an, another uh, kind of pass on this light, but I think we'll start hitting the dark values. So let's go to color range and we're going to select the, the black. And let's also bring in a little bit of that green. And this, I think we're going to keep pretty tight. OK, 
Okay, that's our mask. Now we'll grab some kind of muted gray, blue, green, gray. We'll start introducing that in here. And I might need to zoom out for this part just to just to be able to see what I'm doing to uh, you know push values back and make sure that they are balancing. Now, I honestly don't know how much of this I want to do. I'm going to zoom back in so you can see what I'm doing. I don't know how much of this I want to uh, push back. I really like the contrast. I like the darkness, you know, the, the feeling of a kind of this enclosed cave type shape. Um, I, I do want to expand on the, um, the uh, sensation that it is. You know, there's just kind of this deep, cavernous uh, area. But, um, you do too much of this, it kind of loses its charm. It's a balancing act. That's what I'm saying. It's a balancing act. And I have terrible balance. Push this back a little more.
All right, let's see what that is doing. Diminish the effect. I think somewhere in there would be fine. Let me just take a new layer and just start painting um, some of these values. A little thinner here. Uh oh. I'm hearing noises up there that I hope are not a child getting sick. That's what it kind of sounds like. I can hear my wife up there helping him out. But... Poor kiddo. Make that a little more blue there. This is kind of the boring part, you know? 
but I guess if you want to watch it, this is what uh, this is what the those kind of last bits of kind of figuring out. Like, okay, I like this idea. Now, um, bringing this together into something that. Is worth giving a second look, you know, spending a little more time with. That's a uh, well, it's just a lot of work. Kind of fun to have. So I've got these kind of things emerging from this area. So it might be kind of fun to have this kind of just like swell out of here. Like it's it's all kind of coming out of this pit right here. That might be neat. And I like that that smooth arc. You know, curvature going into there. Maybe a little more subtle on that. Shift that value over a little bit. Maybe add a little shadow into some of this. I think it'd be fun to have that, you know, visible down in here. That there's this. Fog, misty gas type thing kind of coming up, and then it maybe transitions into this light, you know. So let's have it. I'm thinking shift, shifting towards this kind of same gray, you know, as if it's in shadow, but then give it some of this light blue, you know, as if there's. There's a light value down underneath here that's giving that all some giving it a that blue, that blue cast. And I'm going to carry down some of these shapes into the, you know, if, if we're having this be like this uh, little pit down here that all this is kind of coming down into, I want to have it um, visible here as well. So we'll start kind of cutting this, carving this shape into our, uh, into our image.
that might be just a little bit too bright there. But I do like the idea of just having the just catching a little bit of light on that edge. Let's see. See if we can balance that out. Uh, how about some shadow back here? You know, where this... Like, this is obviously in shadow. And so let's cast some shadow onto the... The plane below it. And then... Blend this in just a little more, because that's... Kind of... Soft, cloudy... Form. I don't know if I need to complete that. You know, this I got this complete line here, so let me cut that back to where it was before. So it's kind of it's it's implied here. Um, I think we could raise this up a little bit so that it's just a little bit tighter of a of a wedge shape. It's not um, so fat. And then we could maybe tighten it up here as well. And then I just want to play with this a little bit, see if we can introduce more of that down here. We need to do more here as well. We'll push that back farther down. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. I think it needs, I think this, it needs to be darkened up a little bit because it's got like this, it's like this shadow is cast on it. And yet, um, it's got this really bright value there. Very fast transition to this darker green over here. Um, just doesn't look consistent. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to tighten up the shape a little bit too, so that um, it looks less linear, like less like it's pointing towards us, or rather like, you know, straight up at the ceiling and flat, but more like the shapes kind of bend and curve and, and so forth, you know. And maybe we just start thinking about um, doing a bit more of that. Let's see if we get um, decent value here. So, 
I'm thinking about having these forms twist a little more. Okay, this down in here is interesting. You know, kind of have this um, shift to blue here. I'm actually going to make a new layer, and uh, we'll select that color area. There, and uh, we will try to blend in this green into that into that blue integrate it That's not much. Some interesting stuff going on over here that's and by interesting I mean very clearly hand drawn. So we're gonna start messing some of that up with just with the smudge brush. I uh, generally, you know, I like the the texture um, that it's pulling out, but it's just so linear, you know, the, the uh, line weight is the is um, uniform throughout you know and also the way that you handle lines the way that I handle these lines um, uh, it doesn't necessarily flatter the form in every you know on each each decision that I made right um, so let's see if we can start to justify some of these things here. Should zoom out really to get a, a bigger picture of what's happening when I'm doing all this. That's a bummer. I had a good one. I had a good one and I let it go. Accidentally undid. 
Okay, well, can't bring it back. Gotta let it be. Fiddly bit right there. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's um, add some of this on the other side so that that appears to be. It has a little more of a three dimensional look to it. Losing it, losing the, losing the beauty of that shape by uh, getting too aggressive with that. Maybe just a little bit would do the job right there. I don't know. Gonna fuss over that way too much. Let's see what's going on here. And maybe we take this shape and just make that whole edge. A different value. Feels almost a little too controlled. So I'm going to start cutting that out a little bit. Almost controlled. What does that mean? Is it or is it not? Well, it's not. <clears throat> but it's getting there. Uh oh. Hear more kiddo noises up there. Coughing and general discomfort, it sounds like. So, I think I'm going to wrap up what I'm doing here. Uh, I will, let's see, we'll add I like, I like this, I like how this kind of dissolves down. I think this down here could be or blue. Grab that. Maybe bring it down. 
See, I've got this kind of fog here, so I think we either make this dark down here, just continue that shape down, which kind of works, or we um, bring this fog up into, into this zone here. Uh, which works less, I think. You know, I, I think this, I like this. And, uh, um, do you think that this perhaps is too dark? I don't want to go too far to blue because it pushes it really far back in the, the distance. I just want it to be kind of understated, less uh, prominent. Would this work better if we, oops. Pushed it all the way down to this edge here, or even down to the edge of the canvas. It's interesting. I actually kind of liked what was going on before here. Let me hide that. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to uh, put a mask on this and we'll erase it out. One part. Okay. All right, let's do a um, new color balance, or we can do our, let's do a, um, let's do an overlay. Let's see if we can push some of these areas a little bit. Um, I know it's gonna increase our contrast, so we need to be a little careful. I want to increase the contrast, but I also wanna have smoother, transitions. So that's something to think about. And that's moving us more towards teal. And I think I want that light value to move more towards um, more like purple. I will go a little heavier all right now our shadows do we want that purple or do we want to head back over to this blue? 
think it I think it depends where we are in the scene. I like that the more muted light, I think, feels like it's a light source, you know, coming from above, and then the the bluer light is just kind of a I think a play on uh, the, kind of the distance in the cave as, as you go farther back. Tempted to pause here and see and, and evaluate. So, you know what? I'm going to trust that instinct. So, that's what we've worked on. And then we adjust it. I'm going to bring that back just. Just a little bit. I'm going to adjust the color on it, so I'll just pin a, a hue saturation to it. I'm going to move it, just slide it one way or another, and kind of see. how that affects it. All right, I think we need, uh, I'm gonna do one more overlay. I don't want to do this to every image, but I think I want to bring some light in here and just have this have just a little bit more of that soft transition. You know, so this, you know, is, is clearly the, the area of interest. I still think we need to add more to the image. Um, you know, it's, I think it's a nice environment. Um, I think it would be cool to add uh, Sorry, thinking. Um, it would be cool to add, you know, either a character or a vessel or some kind of thing that starts to... something that's relatable, you know. I feel like we can connect with. That we can live the story through, right? I 
that blue was too strong that I initially added. Let's zoom out here. Okay, that can go blue, I think. Nah, that's too much. I think part of the um, trickiness of doing it this way is you're you're working by comparison and not by the image as it is, right? So you're looking, okay, do, you, do I like that better? Do I like that worse? And, or not worse, like it worse, like it less. Um, and you know, to a degree, I think that's you know a decent way to work because you're processing it, right? Um, and you're you're making some decisions based on that, but you're making decisions based on the difference of uh, between your starting point and your, your end point and not necessarily um, what you've got and where you're headed with it, if that makes sense. So I would recommend being a little bit careful with uh, making snap judgments based on, you know, this step versus the last step. It can help, I guess, to say we're headed in the right direction, but um, doesn't necessarily mean you're interpreting the whole image, like the image as a whole, rather rather than, uh, say, chronologically, does it look better than it did before? I think I'd like some of this value to be lighter in here. So I might just do lighter color and then push that up there. Let me zoom out.
Um, okay. It's about that time. Let's go curves. Let's see about doing a, a little bump. Hue saturation, just to see if a shift would make it any more interesting. And then we'll go um, color balance. Now I do find like a magenta to be a nice um, mid-tone. I think it's just, it just naturally lends itself to that. Um, All right, let's zoom in, let's see what we got. So that is actually not that crazy of a tra change, but um, I think it cleans up the image, it brings it into these zones of like blue, and then pushes these forward a little more with some, uh, some of that little magenta and green that's gonna play off of each other. Um, I mean, obviously it's not coming out as magenta, but we, added that into our existing color and so we ended up with these kind of these browns and a little bit of these purple um, these purple transitions um, and then that against the green is going to have a nice punch contrast and uh, that's what we're going for and something like that Yeah, I don't know. Do I want to push that all the way up to that saturated color? I do like the smooth transitions. So I think we're going to go somewhere around like 70%, 70 somewhere here. All right, let's go full screen. I don't know, this is kind of a, it's a fun image. I like I like where it's going. Um, I kind of see this as like a, a ship or something, but um, I don't think it necessarily needs to be. You know, this line here and this line up here, you know, that I interpret as a, you know, a man-made like cable type thing. And um, be interesting to put some things down here to get perspective. You know, or scale, you know, if it had like tiny little characters down here, you know, I, I don't want to be too on the nose, you know, adding characters certainly gives scale, but uh, it also is like a concept art trope, right, of like, we'll throw a character with a spear in there, right? Um, so, I think there are other ways of doing that, some things that um, could roughly have a recognizable scale. Uh, if I think if you had a um, a ship with a uh, you know a cockpit, the cockpit's small compared to the ship, and the ship feels really big, and then that's farther back, you know, in your scene, and then it, it I think increases the whole scale of the scene. Um, now that I've said that, it's like I kind of have to do it, right? So. Um, 
This is gonna be this is gonna be rough here. Okay, just hold on to your temper your expectations, folks. All right, so uh, we're just gonna go with something like that, and let's go. So I think if we have like just a tiny little cockpit on this thing, it just makes the whole thing seem larger. But, <laughs> alas, I have said, we're calling it for tonight. Can't get into this. Don't do it. Don't do it here. Don't put little windows on there. Don't put more windows. Doesn't, no, doesn't need that. You gotta stop. You gotta be done. Let's put this guy like right there. That little shadow shape. Okay. So all that to say we can do we can do other things to add scale. Oh boy. Alright, we'll save that for a. We'll, we'll keep it in there. We'll keep it in there, but we'll. We'll have to. Have to do something with that guy another time. Okay. I'm gonna save it here. Call it good. Thanks for joining in tonight. I'm gonna go check on my uh, my wife and kiddo. See what's going on up there. Hopefully, all that coughing and whatnot was uh, was um, something acute and uh, we're not gonna not gonna go all night. We'll see. All right. Well, thanks for joining in, everybody. This was fun. I think it was good to uh, take an existing painting that we had worked on. And, and uh, try to take it to a, a higher level of finish. Certainly there's way more we can do. Um, but, uh, you know, I realize that uh, often I'll, um, I'll get excited about an idea and I'll just kind of spitball that idea. And then once it's kind of good enough, like communicated just enough, um, that's where I stop. And, you know, if you make a habit of that, then you kind of set your ceiling for finish on your work and so sometimes you got to push past your comfort level push past that area of um you know feeling like you've communicated it i mean i do think there's a there's definitely value in understanding when to stop um when you're satisfied with an image and when um going further would just kill it but but at some point uh, for me, at least, I had to, had to and still have to push myself to go a little farther um, and get past that point where I've killed it and realize, uh, and by killed it, I mean murdered the image, uh, ruined it, uh, and then realize that, uh, hey, you know, that this, this represents the cap or the limitations in my ability. And uh, for me to 
to uh, take things farther and uh, uh, develop my craft, then I'm going to have to get over that frustration of um, of uh, say ruining works, right? Um, you have to you have to uh, destroy a lot of paintings before you've um, really gotten the mileage in. Um, and I th and I think that road just keeps continuing as you want to push it further and be able to go farther with things. Um, so anyway, uh, little tidbit uh, if you needed that. Hopefully that's uh, worth something for you. As always, thank you for joining in and hope you had uh, had some fun and, and worked on your own images tonight and uh, made some progress. All right, be back next week. Have a good night. Bye.